And tell us a little bit about Elvis. That was interesting. What you're saying. Certainly, uh, I, I love I love a lot of Elvis songs. Eh? So um, one day I was playing uh, some Elvis songs. I was up here in Whippy actually playing some Elvis songs with a small group of people, and we were just singing them. And uh, one of the uh, my daughter Sarah from the first century has reincarnated, and uh, she lives in Canada now with her soulmate. It's, it's Luke, the Bible writer, Luke, who wrote the Book of Luke in the Bible. And, uh, and she's a very, very good medium, and she was with me at the time, and, uh, and, uh, and so I was singing these songs, and I'm feeling, all of a sudden I felt, Elvis is here. Mm. So, uh, so he's not left the building, he's actually left the building. <laughs> anyway, um, I said to Kate, uh, that's her name now, Sarah's name now, I said to Kate, uh, no, I'm sure Elvis is here at the moment, I can feel him, and, and sure enough, he was. And, he said he wanted to trance channel through Kate, uh, which uh, Kate let him do. And he was he he hadn't played. This was about uh, this happened about a year ago, and he hadn't played music since he passed. He mm. hadn't sung since he passed either. Um, and this happens to a lot of musicians on earth. Actually, mm. when they pass, they actually don't sing, like Karen Carpenter, you've heard of Karen yes. Carpenter, yeah. she hasn't sung since she's passed. Um, so, yeah, so there's a lot of musicians who, who, who pass in so sort of a fairly negative moral state, mm. of course, and so, and so they feel so terrible emotions mm. inside of themselves that they, uh, they feel like they can't sing anymore. Because in the spirit world you can only sing when you feel good. And a lot of times when you're feeling terrible emotions, obviously you don't feel good, so you don't feel like you can sing. Mm -hmm. And Elvis, because of his fame, had huge amounts of projected emotion. So every single person, like every time there's an anniversary of his death, there's this huge projected emotion going to Elvis. And what happens with projected emotion is it establishes a, what you would call a psych psychical link, but it's actually an energy stream. Uh, you see it as a blue light when you're in the spirit world, an energy stream that connects the person who's mourning for you with you. And you feel totally drawn to go and actually stop them from mourning about you. That's the feeling, you get drawn into that when you're in the spirit world. And so he's got like thousands or hundreds of thousands of people every year, year after year after year doing this with him. So of course after a while he wants to detune from that, he wants to get away from that. So what he did was he, he renamed himself. He renamed himself as John and then uh, stopped speaking with any person, any medium, anybody on earth. And he was on the divine love path. He'd, he'd learned a bit about God and he was on the divine love path but wasn't sure about how it all worked. But he had this longing for God and rece had received some divine love. And when we caught up with him, he was in the second sphere of the spirit world. So in the second sphere, I think I've described it to you, the second sphere is like far better than the prettiest place you can find on earth. So he's already in quite a pretty place, by then, right? Ironically, his mother, who was a born-again Christian when she was on earth, is in a worse place than he is in the spirit world. And uh, he was trying to help her. But he came to us because he had quite a love, like he was quite, he had a handsome appearance, of course, when he was on earth, and quite a good body. And he said that there were cracks and fissures in his body in his spirit body, that he couldn't understand why they were there and he wanted to know what was going on and, um, and so we started talking about his emotions of shame and guilt about his life on earth, mm -hmm. uh, the emotions of his life on earth, of particularly the things he did in his later life, mm -hmm. which he was very ashamed and felt very guilty about, which were the cause of all of these different body problems that he was having in the spirit form. And after we began talking about that, we talked about that for about 10 or 15 minutes and he actually started connecting with some emotions and had to leave and he, he started working through some of the emotions that were the result of that. But in amongst that discussion you sort of learn a few things in the process, you know, and, and so we learned things about, you know, his feelings about when he passed and, and how he felt, you know, in the spirit world, being in the spirit world with all these projections of emotions at him. And also how he feels now about how he was feeling then and then he came five months later and talked to us as well. And he's now singing again and, uh, and playing instruments again and, 
It's a bit different when you play them in the spirit world. And he's yeah, quite uh, he's quite high now in the in the spirit world, working through his things, and he's on the divine love path, and he understands the divine love path completely now. Um, so he's doing very well. He's trying to help his mother as well. So his mother is quite an angry person on this. So. AJ, is that what happens when someone passes and you and you long for them or you mourn for mm -hmm. them endlessly? You actually trap them? Yes. Many people who are trapped on the earth plane are actually trapped because of your grief. Um, you remember in the movie... Uh, um, no, no. Um, what Dreams May Come. You remember how you know he was with her while she was feeling these emotions and then it sort of depicted the, him walking away from her while she was crying. You remember that scene where he, she was at a grave site screaming about you know the pain she was feeling and he walked away from her and that was the last time he saw her on the earth. Quite the opposite of often the case, when a person is grieving for you emotionally in, on earth, the spirit often wants to stay with the person for as long as they're grieving. But the problem is that it prevents the spirit from actually working out where they are mm -hmm. and what they need to do to work through their stuff to progress with themselves. Mm -hmm. And so um, the grieving emotions, while it's appropriate to feel your grief, directing them at the person mm -hmm. creates huge amounts of trouble for the person in the spirit world. Understand that your feelings of grief are because you have yet to release some emotions about your belief system. Mm. What are the beliefs? That's the end. That's the, the end of life altogether as soon as we die, or there's no spirit world, or, you know, I that I've lo I won't ever see them again, or I've lost contact with them. And none of those beliefs are true. And the truth is that you need to release all those false beliefs emotionally. And that's what grieving is about, releasing those false beliefs emotionally. So, the key thing for you if you're grieving, the key thing for you if you're grieving is to let yourself feel your emotions, but don't project them at the person that you're grieving for. Because when you do that, you're actually keeping them connected with you and not allowing them to actually move forward in their own progression. Does that also happen when you don't grieve? Certainly, remember I've said that whenever you're not feeling an emotion, you're projecting the emotion. 